Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgamash, and today I'm going to show you how you can assign different inputs from your controller, mouse, or joypad to execute different outputs in RPG Developer Bakken. Smile Game Builder was a bit limited in that we didn't have access to the full keyboard. The mouse only had very contextual usage, and we didn't have access to every key on a joypad, although we did have access to most of them. But for full keyboard, mouse, and joypad input control, RPG Developer Bakken has our backs. Let's get started. So first of all, it doesn't matter what control scheme you selected when you created your project. You can actually use these methods and change these commands no matter which one of those that you selected. You can also use the changing of the bindings and the control settings to use one of the other control schemes that you could have selected. So in other words, it's not too late to change your settings whether or not you have created your game in the wizard. Basically, it's never too late to change those settings. And you can change them at any time. We're going to go into the game definition menu under the master menu click that and you'll be brought here and this is an extremely useful screen when you are creating your project or editing information for your project we're going to focus on the right side of the screen in the pane called assign input device now this looks like a bunch of code and it can be easy to feel overwhelmed by it but don't worry if we do any destructive editing to it when things start to crash and not work we can simply click restore default settings and we'll get it all back so what this section is for is that it actually binds the outputs with the inputs that you have physically the outputs are all things that are controls in the game like decide touch dash menu jump action one two and three the movement of up down left and right cancel and the movement of the camera vertical rotation up and down and horizontal rotation clockwise and counterclockwise as well as camera position reset we have access to all of these actions and we can bind any key or mouse function or joypad button to any of these functions Let's take a look at line 10 for an example. Line 10 is binding the up action to the W key on your keyboard as well as the up arrow key on your keyboard. If you press W or up arrow, your character will move up in your game. Sometimes in this code, you'll see this sort of semi-transparent block. Don't worry, this is just the tab key. It makes it much nicer to look at this code if you were to say copy it and paste it into a notepad file. You can make this square by hitting the tab key yourself it doesn't actually affect any of the functionality in the code. The important thing to note is that if you are assigning multiple inputs to the same output, that you do separate them using a comma. I also separate them with the tab key for uniformity. So we'll just take another look at, say, line 30, where we are binding the camera vertical rotation up to the R key, and there are a bunch of tabs here. But again, the number of tabs and the existence of them doesn't affect anything, it's just the visual appearance of the code. In some control schemes, your camera zoom in and out is disabled. We can re-enable these by clicking and getting rid of these double slashes in front of the word bind. Every time you do this, you are enabling that control. And if you type double slashes in front of any of these lines of code, you are disabling that control. You see, the interpreter is going to take a look at each one of these lines of code, and it's going to execute them. When it comes across one of these that have double slashes in front of it though, it knows it can safely ignore that line of code. It won't process anything after double slashes on the same line. Just like in real life, whenever I ask people to subscribe to my channel and double slashes occur, so they safely ignore that instruction. I'm just kidding, you guys are great. So if we type double slashes, we can literally leave a note for ourselves and we can leave instructions for other people who might be reading the code. Now again, if you're not comfortable doing this or you fear you may have messed something up, you can always restore default settings, but it's worth testing to see if you didn't mess anything up. Because if you do type something incomprehensible on one of these lines, the interpreter will just give you a message saying that there was an error reading it and that it'll ignore it. So here's an example. Here's some gobbledygook on line 48. We'll test play and here's my warning message. Following line was invalid, so it will be ignored and executed. 48. It affects nothing now. All right, so now I want to talk about pad buttons. To illustrate the usage of pad buttons and how to change those, we're going to take a look at line 77. We can see that the jump command has been bound to pad button 3 as well as the X key on the keyboard. These are done on different lines so that if you wanted to disable one of them, you could. I'm going to re-enable the pad button 3 line so that we can jump using pad button 3. But what exactly is pad button 3? Don't worry, I spent hours making this handy dandy infographic in the cutting edge 
art program notepad in order to be able to show you exactly what they're talking about here. First, I want you to take a look at this typical controller layout. This is probably more of say the layout of a DualShock or a DualSense controller. And a lot of you may be using Xbox controllers to play your Smile Game Builder games or third-party controllers that look like Xbox controllers. So I've given the keys an Xbox convention naming. It's just I've, I've placed these in, in the way that they're placed on a DualShock. That's confusing. Anyway, remember this layout because you have your left trigger in the upper left-hand corner. Your left button is right after that on the shoulder of the controller. Your right trigger and button are on the right side. Opposite Sit those left. Your up, down, left, and right is on your D pad. Your select and start buttons are usually on the face of your controller between the D pad and the other face buttons. And the face buttons opposite your D pad are X or square if it's on a PlayStation controller, A or the shape of X if it's on a PlayStation controller, B or circle, and Y or triangle. And if you're using a Nintendo Switch controller, you can just switch the positions of the X and Y and the B and the A, and it'll make sense. I've put crude arrows around the center of these two buttons to show you that these are the analog sticks. If you press in on the analog stick, that is actually an input. There are a lot of games that utilize this input and cause something to happen when you press in on the stick. I don't know what you Xbox players call these functions uh, on a DualShock for PlayStation games. It's L3 and R3. The function of moving your character up, down, left, and right, and moving your camera up, down, left, and right is typically done using the analog functions of these joysticks. So these are all of the functions that we can access in RPG Developer Bakken, and I'll show you how. This actually tells you what these buttons are. This is how you can refer to those inputs in your Bakken input assignment. Pad button 10, for example, is the left trigger. Pad button 4 is the left bumper. D-pad right, obviously, I hope, refers to the right key on your D-pad. Pad button 2 would be referring over here to your X button if it's an Xbox controller, square button if it is a PlayStation controller, or Y button if it is a Nintendo controller. Your pad buttons 6 and 7 are right over your select and start buttons respectively. Pad button 8 will trigger when you push in your left analog stick. Pad button 9 is your right analog stick. And then the functions of actually moving those sticks is a little bit different, but I put the arrows here just to be consistent about my illustration. All right, so once again, taking a look at the assign input device code, we can see that jump is bound to the X key on line 76. On line 77, it is bound to pad button three, and we could see from the infographic that pad button three would be the Y key on our Xbox controller or a triangle on a PlayStation controller. Now, in a lot of games, you might expect to hit the button that is closest to the thumb pad. On an Xbox controller, this is the A button. On Nintendo, this is B. And on a PlayStation, this is X, but they all have the same position. It's the bottom of the cross pattern of face buttons on your controller. And so we're going to call this pad button zero because that's how Bakken refers to it. And we'll just replace that three with a zero right here in the editor. And now we can hit apply and okay. And when we test play, that button is now gonna make my character jump. And this feels really, really natural and intuitive because the X key on my controller is what I would expect to hold whenever I want to dash in one of these action games. And now I can press jump in tandem with that. By the way, Bakken supports a heck of a lot of inputs all at the same time. You can rotate your camera on two axes while holding dash, run, and jump. So that's five inputs we've got going on right there. If I'm running diagonally, that's six inputs. SGB, I think, only gave us access to three inputs before it stopped reading any inputs that were being put in. All right, so that's already a pretty useful example. Now there is some functionality that I want to emulate for fun. And in doing so, I'm going to show you how you can use combinations of inputs to perform certain actions. So in Final Fantasy XIV, which I play using a DualShock controller, I can hold down the L1 key while I move the right analog stick upwards, and that will zoom in on my character. If I hold L1 and move the right analog stick down, that will zoom out. I want to replicate that functionality using the input assignments here. So on line 52, we have bind camera zoom in, and that is attached to pad button four, which is pretty useful because pad button four is already in the L1 spot, but then for some reason, it is also linked to pad button five, which means if you hit both of these shoulder buttons at the same time, the camera will zoom in if this key bind is enabled. The camera will zoom out if you hold 
pad button 4 and press pad button 11 at the same time. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, so I'm going to change both of them. I'm going to keep pad button 4 where it's at, but you'll notice that there is a plus sign between pad button 4 and pad button 5 on line 52, and that is what is causing this to read, please press both of them at the same time in order to enact this action. The output won't happen unless both of these things occur together. But it's not pad button 5 that I want to use with pad button 4. It's the right analog stick, and it's the movement of it upwards. So we're going to go to a line that has the movement of the right analog stick upwards already being input. And that's going to be the camera vertical rotation up. Now something I did not write on my infographic, but I should have wrote it where the arrows are, are these. These are the ways that you can refer to the movement of the thumb pads. Pad underscore right underscore thumb underscore y underscore plus and then a number, 1.0. I'm just gonna copy all of that by hitting Control C, and back to line 52, I'm going to highlight pad button five and hit Control V to just place that with what I've copied. I'd like to see if that works as it is. So back to test playing, and I'm gonna hold in the L1 button and move the right analog stick up, and it does indeed zoom right into my player's character's crotch. Uh, it is also angling the camera down because that key bind is still connected. <laughs> Look at what happens when I jump. Boing! Okay, so I'm going to go back to game definition, and I'm going to find that vertical rotation up key bind, and I'm going to comment it out. I'm going to do the same thing to rotate down because I know the same thing's going to happen when I try to assign myself a zoom out. But while I'm here, I'm going to copy pad right thumb y minus 1.0, control C, and I'll go right down here to camera zoom out, and I will replace this with that. I will hit apply and OK and test play. And now the camera zooms in and out whenever I hold down the L1 key and move the right analog stick up or down. It feels extremely natural because this is the control scheme that I use for Final Fantasy. There are some differences. When I move the right analog stick to the left, the camera wants to rotate to its left around the player. And I prefer, I think, to have this control inverted, but yeah, I think that's correct. So back to game definition for horizontal rotation clockwise on line 38 and counterclockwise on line 39, I'm actually gonna rip, just, just take these and completely switch their inputs. So the plus will read minus and the minus will read plus. I'm also gonna get rid of this garbage line of code because it keeps telling me that it's there and that it can't compile it. And I forgot to put a space between the X plus and the 1.0. We'll discuss what the 1.0 refers to here in just a second. Nothing to worry about at all. And now the left and right of my analog sticks are working great. Yeah, this feels a lot more natural. This is exactly how I like to use my camera. All right, perfect. So one final thing I want to go over is these dead zones as well as what the various 1.0s mean throughout this code. The dead zone is something I wouldn't mess with. It is simply defining the area in which your analog sticks do not have any effect. You might decide to change these if you want to, say, increase the sensitivity of your analog sticks or decrease the sensitivity. If you change these numbers, you can make it to where player just barely pushing on the analog stick <coughs> can cause the output to happen. Or you can change them to where the output doesn't happen unless the player goes all the way with the analog stick. If the controls don't feel natural to you, I would suggest playing with these values and remembering that you can always change them back to 0.3 if you don't like the results. All right, and the 1.0s that are next to things like the camera horizontal rotate counterclockwise and clockwise and the rotate up and down, these refer to the speed at which these cameras will move. Right now, they'll all move with a speed of 1.0, but you can raise this number in order to greatly increase the speed of the camera or lower the number to decrease the speed. So here is the camera normal speed 1.0, that's the default. Here's the 5.0 that I put in. If you're having trouble with any of the first person viewpoints and the speed of the camera, or if you feel like it's not smooth, you can change those camera speeds there in your assignment input menu. And that's about all I have for this tutorial. I hope that you can extrapolate and set up different combinations of inputs to make your game feel as unique as you want it to. I have a lot of fun playing with different controller setups. It's usually one of the first things that I try to learn when I get into one of these new engines, because giving your players control means 
giving them power. And one of the best things you can do as a designer is create a beautiful sandbox world and then give your player as many things to do in it as possible. And now you can do that very easily with Bakking. All right, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Questions, comments, suggestions down below. Let me know how I'm doing. Please consider subscribing to the channel, your premier source for Bakking education, and I will see you in the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye for now.